Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Suzanne Fullwood, and I am your client executive for the Optima EAP program. Now, you all are familiar with EAP, right? Okay, you do know that throughout life, we're all going to go through something. It seems like when you put a lid on something, something else pops off. It's just never ending. And it does matter how much you go through. It does matter how much your mind can hold. And it does matter where you go to get the help that you need. So allow me to introduce myself to you again. I'm Suzanne. I grew up in Hampton, Virginia. I had moved to Richmond back in 1988. My parents still lived in Hampton. My mother was an English professor at Thomas Nelson. My mother was very bougie. She was very posh and she would articulate all the endings on her words at all times. And this was 24 seven. So you can imagine what it was like growing up for me. But unfortunately in 2013, my mother suffered a massive stroke, which left her bedridden, stroke, dementia, feeding tube, the whole nine yards. We were taking care of her at home with the aid and assistance of a caregiver. My father was 86 at the time and considering his age and my mother's sickness, I needed to be home more. So my father said to me one day, he said, Puddin, they're building a house on the next street over it. He called me Puddin. Um, so <clears throat> my father's a man of a few words. He's like E.F. Hutton. He would speak. I listened. So again, you heard me say I was living in Richmond. I moved home. Nine days after I closed on the house, my father had a seizure right there in front of me. My father, we took him to the hospital. He chose to have the surgery because he, we found out that he had a tumor, a third of the size of his head. Guess what happened when he had the surgery? He too had a stroke. So I had both parents, stroke, dementia, feeding tube in that house that my father told me about. My mother passed away September 5th of 2016. My father passed away 47 days later, okay? And I'm the only child. And I was going through an ugly divorce. So the reason I say all of this is because throughout life, we're all gonna go through things, whether they're planned or unplanned, but you have to be prepared. You have to stand still. You have to stand. And I'm here to tell you that you don't always have to look like what you've been through. All right, so again, that's my brief introduction. Now, everybody has a packet, and on the front of the packet is a little card. I want you to put your thumb on the square, and we're gonna check everybody's stress level. And nobody should be stressed out at 1210 today. All right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How many greens do I have? Oh boy. How many blues do I have? Whew, okay, so if it did not change, and it remained black, that means that you are stressed out, okay? And you do know, you do know that stress has manifestations on your body. You can have a heart attack or you can have a stroke from stress. So what we're gonna talk about today is some emotional self-care. Now, when I was taking care of both of my parents, you know who was the last person that was taken care of, and that was me. I had gotten down to like 119 pounds. The minister would come to the house and she'd say, Suzanne, are you eating? And I'm like, yeah, I'm eating. I thought I was kind of cute, but then one day I looked in the mirror and I was like, whoa, I could see my bones through here, all right? I had to realize that I had to take care of myself first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through these 12 bullet points. Some of them are going to make you think. Some of them may make you cry. Some of them are going to make you laugh. But the very first one is you have to allow yourself to feel. Now, we all have tear ducts. Some of, the, some of us use them more than others. But when you are going through something, allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to cry if you need to cry. Take that who saw moment if you need that moment. If you, not, if you think you need to scream, you might want to go outside with that one. But again, you have to allow yourself to feel because what happens is pressure on top of pressure on top of pressure and pressure will burst a pipe. So allow yourself to feel. Mother's Day for me, horrible absolutely horrible. And I was fine that morning until I got up and I started looking on Facebook and I saw everybody else with their mother. And so, you know, so again, my husband understood. He kind of just left me alone, but I had to take that moment to myself to allow myself to feel. Number two, pay attention to physical sensations. Now, all of our body parts move and groove and sync, right? But then when something jumps off, kills you, the body's way of saying, hey, something going on, pain. But what do we do? We go and get medicine from two years ago. Okay, we'll get a Band-Aid too small for the wound. We don't go to the doctor at all. But then when we do decide to go to the doctor, it's a stage four of something. So again, pay attention to what your body is telling you. No matter how minute it is, especially during this COVID season, pay attention to what your body is saying. Reflect on your feelings. Now, I used to write in a journal every night for years. So what I would do is I would take like this year today and then go back five years and look on the exact same day. If you were doing the same thing today that you were doing five years ago on that same day, 
something needs to change. Now, there are situations in people's lives with things, you know, maybe don't change, maybe you're a caregiver, something is going on like that. But again, as the kids say, as I hear them say on a regular, we need to be growing. We should not be stagnant, all right? Express yourself creatively. Now, I sing in the church choir at my church, and in the shower in the morning, I sing soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and I bring it all together like the Hallelujah Choir, and I sing loudly, too. My, my husband is probably like, oh, my God, here she goes, and my puppy just sits there and looks like, Mommy, please. But again, that's my way of being grateful. That's my way of creativity. That's my way of expressing myself. Now, when my parents were in the hospital, it looked to me like they were both on every machine in there. And so what I would do is I would go to Michael's and I'd buy some of these big flowers and I'd disassemble it and reassemble it and bedazzle it and, bedazzle it and I'd, wear them on my, I'd wear them on my lapel. Sorry about that. But again, everybody has a creative side. You just need to find out what it is. All right, number five, limit exposure to negative messages. Now, how many people do you know are negative all the time? Or could it be that you are negative all the time? We have to watch the negativity, all right? I tell people all the time, at night, do not watch the news because what happens is your body is at rest but your mind is constantly twirling and you work, wake up tired the next morning, all right? Whenever, have you ever t uh, said good morning to somebody and they shoot off at you like a cannon? Well, my famous saying is, well, gosh, who peewee'd in your cornflakes last night? You know, what is going on? But I encourage you all, do not react. At this day and time, you never know when somebody is on the very edge, okay? And always, you know, EAP has been he very helpful for me to help me to understand people because I don't react as quickly. First thing I'll say to my mind is something's not right. You know, the, my teammates call me the church lady. Whenever something's going on, they always say, Suzanne, will you pray? Because they know if I see them acting any other way than normal, I'm running to them like, you okay? Don't forget we have EAP. All right. And sometimes that's all it takes to kind of snap somebody out of something that they may be going through. So, again, limit exposure. Work on replacing negative messages. I promise you, as, as surely as I stand here with my combat boots on, regardless of anything that you're going through in life, there's a positive in it somewhere. Sometimes you just got to dig down deep to find it. Now, when both of my parents passed away within a month of each other, that was the most horrific experience that I could have ever imagined. But you know, when I sat back and I thought about it, they had been married for almost 60 years. She probably wouldn't want to live without him, vice versa. That's my story. Sticking with it, we're going on to number seven. All right, engage in activities. One, two, three, what's everybody's hobby? Ooh, ooh. Oh my goodness, now I, <laughs> scrapbooking, thank you, thank you. Everybody needs a hobby. Everybody needs that thing that you enjoy to maybe take your mind to another place that you enjoy doing by yourself. So don't you fish or do something? No hobbies? Okay. What's that? I do a little bit of everything. Okay, all right, a little bit of everything. Okay, we'll take that. See, like my husband, he's a photographer. He likes to get up in the morning, take sunsets and sunrises. He also likes to um, plant flowers. I don't do flowers, especially after I've got my nails done. We don't do that. Me, I'm a gym rat. I love a boot camp. Every Monday, every Monday through Friday, no, Monday through Thursday at 6 o'clock, I am in that gym. By the time you all are rolling over one good time, I have done more exercise than you can imagine. So everybody needs a hobby. All right, moving on to number eight, creating emotional boundaries. This one is critical. How many times are you going to let that person talk to you any kind of way? How many times are you going to let that person treat you any kind of way? You have to create emotional boundaries of how much you are willing to accept. And believe me, no is an answer. Because people will try to pull you all kinds of ways, and what do we do to everything that comes by? Yes, 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 yes. And then who's the one that's all stressed out? All right, so you have to create emotional boundaries. Recognize what your triggers are. You know one of my pet peeves? One of my pet peeves is dishes in the sink. Now, if I come home today, after having been in North Carolina today, and there are dishes in that sink, you know what's gonna happen. That's a trigger for me. So I need not go through the kitchen, which goes straight, I mean, go through the garage, which goes straight to the kitchen. I need to go through the front door and go upstairs. Because this little thing in your mouth, that pink thing called your tongue, it'll start, to, as my mother would say, it'll start to waggling around. And words can cut. And they can cut deeply. All right, so again, create your emotional boundaries of how much you're willing to, ex um, ex what you're willing to expect, but also stick to it. No means no. All right, next, begin a gratitude practice. This one gets me all choked up every time. 
Be grateful for everything that you have. Be, get, be grateful for your friends, your family, material things. Be grateful. But also, be grateful for things that you don't have. Have you ever asked for something, you got it, and then you messed it up? Okay, because you weren't ready for it, but you just had to have it, right? So again, be grateful. Number 10, resolve emotional wounds. Now I bet you there are three people in this room looking at me that are mad at somebody about something for three years ago. Okay, they've gone on with their lives, and you see them, and your eyebrows go up like the McDonald's arches. Okay, sometimes you have to repeat this after me. Let, let it go. Because who's the one that's hurting? You. You're the one that's holding on. Again, they've gone on with their lives, and you're still back here stirring around and stuff. All right, sometimes you have to let it go. Also, when you talk about resolving emotional wounds, it's, um, the analogy that I use a lot is that of a bicycle. I'm clumsy, and I used to ride my bicycle, and I just fall down and tear my skin down to the white meat, okay? And it would bleed and bleed and bleed, and that's your heart when you're going through something. Then over time, the scab starts to grow, but when I was a little girl, I used to peel the scab off, so that kind of kicks you back two feet. But again, it's going to continue to try to heal. Then the little polka dots grow in there, and then the skin kind of smooths over, and that's your heart. Okay, over time, it just takes time, but you have to allow it to heal. Don't walk into the fire with things, all right? Allow your heart to heal. Cultivate emotional intelligence. Now, I will tell you anything about me because I consider myself a walking testimony, but I used to suffer with anger management. It did not take long. At least if somebody would say something to me and it's just like a fire lit up underneath me and I'd hover in that space for a long time and somebody as nice as Alicia would come by and say something and then boom, she catches it. Now, is that fair? It's not fair to her, and it surely wasn't nice of me to do. But again, recognize what your triggers are. Time is a trigger for me. If anybody's late, when I have to do something, you know, my jaws get tight. Okay, I got that from my father, because my father, whenever the caregivers would be a few minutes late coming to the house, and we had a faithful caregiver. She would ride her bicycle. She would walk. But if she was not at that door at 7 o'clock, my father would stand in there, and his famous thing is he would hum and scratch his head and put his hand on his hip. And whenever I saw him doing this, I'm like, Daddy, just calm down. She's coming. She's coming. So again, cultivate emotional intelligence. And then last but not least, ask for help. Now, again, I encourage you all, be your brother's keeper, okay? If you find somebody that's going through something, please recommend them to go to EAP. Please don't try to be the clinician. Because see, as a people, what we do, we have a tendency to go and talk to our friends and our family. And they don't really know what to say. So what do they do? They pacify us. They'll say, oh, it'll be okay. Whereas a clinician may say, mm -mm, no, it's not going to be okay. Let's get them in and let's talk about it. And you all have five visits per topic. Um, when we talk about the topics on this middle flyer right here, these are just some of the topics that you can talk to our clinician about. These are just some of the ones that we see more often. So stress, anger, family dynamics. Again, five visits per topic, not only for you as the employee, five visits for you and everybody in your household. Now let's clarify that. As long as they have your address as their permanent address, they qualify for the program. So again, five visits per topic. This is the way that I envision, envision that those visits go. Visit number one and two, you're talking to the clinician and you're doing what I call you're dumping your bucket. You're telling the clinician everything about who? Everybody else. Because see, at that point, <laughs> you may not want to admit, oops, it might be me, okay? Visit number three, the clinician changes the paradigm and they say, okay, Ms. Fullwood, we've heard what you had to say. Let's see if we can help you to manage some of the things. So you see how it shifted back on you? Visit number four, your wings are right here. You should feel a lot better about the situation. Visit number five, you should be able to fly away. However, in some situations, five visits is not enough. At that point, you would be turned over to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. At that point, you would have a copay, a deductible, or a coinsurance. But keep in mind, these first five visits per person, per topic, are covered at 100%. Now, how do you get in contact with EAP? You call the 1-800 number. And our customer service reps will uh, take the information, and they, will, they, they are supposed to set you up an appointment with a clinician. But you all know that mental health has jumped off the charts. It's a lot going on. And now my job, well, I, I consider it my sole job, is to educate people and let people know that if you're not okay, it's okay. Because, see, if I told you that I had a chronic condition such as cancer or lupus or something like that, your heart would go on your sleeve for me, right? But the minute I tell you that I have a mental health condition, 
treat me like I have the plague, and it's not right. It's not right. There's a medication for a chronic condition. There's a medication for a mental health situation. Has anybody in here seen the movie The Joker? Okay, so that's mental health to the extreme. Just because people are laughing with you, everybody in that movie was laughing. I was in there crying. I didn't see it to be funny. Mental health is real. Just like we take care of our physical bodies, we have to take care of our minds too. So again, the EAP program is there for you. Um, also, don't forget to check out our website. Um, the username for you all is CurryTuck. And um, there are webinars out there, seminars. You all get the Monday morning thought of the week. You send those out? Okay. So I'm the one that sends those out every Monday morning. Um, some of them are inspirational. Some of them are informational. What we're trying to get people to do is to use the website. So some of them will say, for additional information, go to ABC. So again, that's our reason for doing that. But our website is thebomb.com. And then one other benefit that you all have is a legal financial identity theft benefit. This benefit right here within itself is worth its weight in paper. So if you look at the legal assist, for topics such as real estate, landlord, uh, bankruptcy, all of those topics right there, you get 30 minutes to talk to an attorney for free. Now, I always tell people, you know, formulate your questions before um, you get on the phone call because, again, at minute number 31, you're going to start to get charged. But my mother would say, don't do an idle chatter. All right, so, again, 30 minutes for free. Down at the bottom, ID recovery assist. If ever your ID is compromised, you get 30 minutes to talk to a consultant trying to help you get back on track. And then the real big one is on the back here, financial assist. All of these topics right here, 60 to 90 minutes to talk to a consultant about these topics. And that's an hour and a half. That's a long time. So I encourage you all to use these um, benefits. I get a report every month, and it's not just this group. It's all of my groups. Nobody really uses the benefits. So I try to get out here and preach and teach and talk about it. But um, it's a wonderful benefit if ever you use it. So that ends my spiel on Optima EAP, self-care. You have to take care of yourself first. Who's the most important in your life? And it's not being selfish. I love me. I have to take care of me. And so in a lot of situations, I have to put me first. So that's it. Any questions?